This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. Words that are coming out from the heart, finding their way into the heart, with no doubt. The Creator's intention in bringing the redemption in the last generation is very, very deep and very, very hidden. If we would think to ourselves, which generation would be the most worthy and ready, qualified to, to see the face of Mashiach, so for sure we're going to think to ourselves, probably the holiest generations, but the most righteous ones, the most generous people, but from one generation to the next, we see that we have Yeridat Adorot, generations are falling. The level of the souls, the holiness and the purity of the people are going down. First we had Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, their holy wives, our ancestors, the holy tribes, generations of Moses, generations of Yeshua Binun, the kings, the judges, the prophets, slowly, slowly going down, Tanaim, Amoraim, days of the Mishnah, the Zohar Kadosh, and then generation of the Gemara that cannot even compare themselves to the last generation, saying to themselves, who are we compared to them? We're like fleas on the back of donkeys compared to them, they're saying. Who are we? And to look at us today and even to try to compare ourselves to someone, it's like, it's hilarious, it's a joke. We don't know who we are, how can we compare ourselves to someone when you don't recognize yourself in the mirror? Who is that? What? What am I doing here? <laughs> Once, I think after five or six years of, of my tshuva, my grandmother, Alea Shalom, passed away. Zelda Batsara Rivka and I drove with my brother, he drove, I drove with him to Haifa from Jerusalem to her funeral and while we're driving we're chatting, brothers and we're talking and laughing and having fun and with the conversation I, I, I went out a little bit from my position as a Baal Tshuva, as a religious person. I, I just hang out with my brother for a while. It was a two hours drive, traffic. And I remember looking at the car mirror on the side, suddenly I saw my face. And then it hit me. You don't know who you are. I saw myself with beard with side girls, with peot, with my kippah. And I felt weird. I couldn't recognize myself in the mirror. It was a weird thing to see myself religious after two hours with my brother driving and laughing in the car. When I'm looking at my past and asking myself who you are, what you went through, it's hard for me to imagine that this person, to me even, that I have those memories inside of my mind. I was clubbing in discotheques, in, in clubs, in Amsterdam, in after parties, after taking crazy amounts of drugs, in after parties, in the middle of Shabbos morning, dancing like sick. And today I can find myself teaching Torah, and I am, and helping other people to find their way back to Hashem and to believe in Him, and what's going on? How can it be that the Creator is choosing people like us to wake us up? Because He did. I am a result of a wonder, of a miracle. 
The only reason today I know about Hashem and I truly believe in Him with all my heart and even when I fall and even when I suffer and even in the hardest hours of them all I have a problem with the Creator but I never stop thinking about Him even if I argue with Him, even if I pray for Him to change His judgments and His decrees and have problems with Him, He doesn't move from my eyes for a second. So for a person that grew up in a totally different environment, that Hashem thought never crossed His mind as a child, maybe generally no tradition, no religion, no Shabbat, no Kashrut, Nothing like that. And suddenly to find the reason and, and a spark, maybe he exists, maybe really it's true what that all of those religious people are talking about. Maybe I'll investigate, maybe I'll think, maybe I'll try, maybe I'll taste. And then it's taking you somewhere. And the Creator is talking to you. And you can recognize that supervision of the Creator in your life that He is sending His messengers and His angels to wake you up and another one and another one and suddenly those are not coincidence anymore. It's an individual supervision on your life to open your eyes and to open your heart to sense and to feel and to recognize His Godliness in the world that He is running the show, that He is the King, that He is on top. That there is a spirit to this creation. And it's on, not only physical curtains. It's a live creation that is functioning, corresponding to the divine will. And there is no one that can move a finger unless the Creator wants it and decrees on that. And you see that. And you recognize that. And you look at the mirror. And you cannot recognize yourself. You ask yourself, who are you that the Creator will show His face to you in such a unique way? That He will choose you to communicate to you, with you. To talk to you in the nights. To reveal Himself to you in your dreams. To uplift you to levels that you never imagined that exist at all. To give you the power and the ability to go and to pray for thousands of hours, to pray, to do six hours, and another six, and here eleven hours in Bodhidut, and eighteen hours in a row, and to make wonders in the world with your prayers, and to go and to pray. And all of us, we experienced something. All of us, we felt some spiritual power, some spiritual taste and flavor, because else, if we wouldn't, we wouldn't be here. You're here because you felt something and you keep on wanting to come back to that feeling. Like the verse is saying, Tamu u'ukitov Hashem. After you taste and you feel that that taste is sweet, is pleasant, is satisfying you, now you want to see more, now you want to achieve more. So you keep on coming and you keep on learning and you keep on watching and you're going and opening another book and you consult with a friend and you're calling your rabbi and you're asking around and you Google it and you, 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 you search for it and where is Hashem? Now the fact is that the Creator took that decision before of time, before of creation, that Mashiach, that the complete redemption will come in the last generation, right? It's simple, it's obvious. And it was also obvious for him that the generations will fall, will go lower and lower. That was the plan. From the first moment, that was the plan. Hashem sent the first man to heaven, separated him from his wife. In the beginning they were one piece, in one body. And then the Creator start dividing the system, start cutting them and separating them. And then more children and wives and weddings and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And the separation started. That was the plan. To separate us to nations and to communities and to groups and to towns and to villages. And to spread us all around that we will be divided from the source that we will look for our way back 
that we will do tshuva, that we will come back finally to our unity. Even though that we'll, we'll be so separated and so divided, that is the divine will, that is the ancient plan. But for us to receive the face of Mashiach, something must be unique with us. Because to say that we worth it, that we are the best, that we are so beautiful, that we're fantastic, that we're amazing, we know that we are failing on daily basis in sins and in crimes and in horrible lackings and weaknesses that we have. All of us. It's a general condition of our generation. We're all weak. We're all weak and we're all lazy and we're all confused, and we're all lost, and we're all looking for some power, some energy, some source of inspiration, and we all desire something, but even when we find it, we're losing track. And then we try to reroute and to reconnect, and for that Hashem gave us Wi-Fi, and for that Hashem gave us Waze and Google Maps, because we don't know how to handle no situation. We don't know how to find our way. Today, can you deal in life without ways, without Google Maps? Can you deal with it? You can, can you drive? Can you get from point A to point B without your cellular? No way! You're lost! You are a complete lost person that cannot even find his way to the grocery store and you're done. And that's reality. You don't know your way to your best friend's house. You don't know how to do it, to work, to do your job. You can't find your way. This is how low we got. This is what that happened to us, also physically, also spiritually. You know you, can, you should keep Shabbat. You know you should eat kosher. You know you should guard your eyes and you need to be pure. You know you're not allowed to talk Lashon Hara and hundreds and thousands of failures every single day. You know you need to believe. You know you need to pray. You know you need to watch yourself. You know you need to be modest. You know you must... Thousands of obligations. You know it. You know it about yourself. Not because it's written in the Bible. Not because righteous ones guided us and told us what we need to. Because you know that when you talk bad on someone else, suddenly you're being hit. You know it. Because you felt that eating not kosher destroyed your life and made you silly, made you stupid. You felt it. We felt it in our lives. We, Baalei Tshuva, we know it. We know that to violate Shabbat is not the right way. We feel good in keeping Shabbat. We feel better when we keep Shabbat. Not because of the punishment, and not because of the, 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 the commandments and their holiness and how true... In reality, it doesn't make you happy to go and celebrate and clubbing and, and, and whatever. You see that it doesn't make no sense to your life. You see that for you, it's better to keep a modest way of life, to be humble, to be nice, to be kind, to appreciate, to talk only good, to judge people favorably. You found those things about yourself. And still, we're failing and disappointing ourselves, breaking the foundations of our own life on daily basis. Like we have some kind of sickness in our mind, an evil inclination that is playing with our minds from within and making us crazy, breaking ourselves to pieces and destroying ourselves with our own hands. Literally, stupid, stupid, <laughs> stupid. And the Creator chose us, that broken generation, to bring Mashiach into our lives. And we supposed to have a vessel. What's that vessel? What makes us more capable of receiving the face of Mashiach than our ancestors? Than those holy angels, those giants that rule and run the world thousands of years ago? What makes us better than them to have the merit to accept the face of Mashiach? When we know that part of them were crying because they knew how hard it's going to be in the days of Mashiach. And they begged Hashem, please, 
Don't bring us in a lifetime to the last generations because we won't be able to stand those tests. What makes us so strong and powerful to have the ability to go through that darkness of today and to become that vessel, to be that generation that will deliver the good news to the world, that will receive the face of Mashiach. It's only our humility. It's only the fact that we know that we are failing on daily basis and we're not backing off because of that. That is humility. Humility is not a game, is not an act. It's not to show to other people that you're not answering when someone curses you in the street. It's not that if your wife is screaming at you and you're pretending to be humble and you have arrogant thoughts of pride and disrespect for her while she's talking and you play the game. No, I never answer. No, I'm not answering back. That's not humility. Humility is when you know that you're a piece of junk and you live with it and you keep on trying to do the best that you can even though that you know that you're a piece of junk and it's okay for you. And that thing is written on Moshe Rabbeinu, on that righteous man, the pillar of the world, Moses. It's written on him that Moshe was shafel vesavlan. He was humble and also had the ability to suffer. And I think it's the Metsudot David, one of the righteous ones that wrote explanations on the verses, and he interpreted that verse, Shafel Vesavlan, that he was also humble, Shafel, low, and also had the ability to suffer with that explanation. He said, he was able to suffer, means to survive, to hold on, with his understanding that he is low. He was able, He was able to accept his humiliations, his shames. We are like him. If we are here and we know that we're failing every day, we know it. We don't have a doubt about it. We see that. We carry those scars with us. We're failing in front of our most precious beloved ones. We're, lawi, uh, uh, we're, we're lying to our beloved ones and we're apologizing on it. We're failing in the most basic things in life. In things that we already clarified thousands of times to ourselves that we're not allowed to do, that we don't want to do, and we do it over and over and over. The question why is being answered with that simple answer. Because that's how Hashem wants. This is what that Hashem wants. Because from our humiliations and from the fact that we are failing and losing our mind and then we are revealing our passion to become better people and not to give up and not to back off from our inner desire to be straight and to be good and to be nice and to be righteous and to be pure. By that we're showing our humility. And that's the only vessel to receive the face of Mashiach. Only when you're humble, the Creator can be with you. Only when you're honest. Only when you are aware to the fact that you are a creation, a clay in the hand of the artist, in the hand of the creator, that he, that he is the one that can decide everything about you. That it's in his power to give you life or to take the life from a person. To give you money and to make you rich or to take the money from a person and to make him completely poor and even homeless. Only when you know those things and you complete your faith and your faith doesn't betray you. Because even when you see that the Creator might put you in difficulties 
and that those challenges are not breaking your spirit, and you decide to keep on walking toward even though that you feel like a failure, that you see that your prayers are not being answered, and that you see that you're not catching anything from your learning, and that you see that you can talk to your children for thousands of hours and they doesn't get it at all, and that you can talk to yourself for years and you don't get it. And nothing works for you. And you keep on fighting, and you keep on trying, that is showing the power of your soul, how unique and special you are, that you will never give up on the truth, because you're already not giving up, and your condition is not the best, and you experience darkness, and you taste the ground, and you feel the ashes, and the tears are blowing your eyes, and the thoughts are attacking you from in, inside your mind, and you have bad dreams, and anxieties, and depression, and you suffer, and you don't know your way, and you're doubting everything, and you feel rejected, and not loved, and you feel so low and so broken, and even though you're not backing off, by that you're showing how unique you are. By that you're showing to the Creator that you are the Chosen One. That we are those that have the ability to receive the light of redemption and that it will not confuse us. That we won't confuse and mistake to think that we are worthy for it. That we are so important. That we are so great. That we are noble. That we are righteous. No, we're not. We're just simple creations and we are experiencing the unconditional, enormous love of the Father to His children. And with that, and for that, we're fighting. And we are pushing toward the redemption and we're doing the best that we can and we're coming and apologizing to our beloved ones again and we're saying I'm sorry and we're able to do tshuva and to complete our tshuva because how can you complete your tshuva? Because the, the Creator is doing a favor with you and failing you in thousands of failures every day that you will not avoid the opportunity of doing tshuva in every moment of your life. Because tshuva is something that was that been invented, created before of the creation. The idea that they will come back to me was an idea that was before of time. Before that the Creator decided to create the world and to put people and amazing animals and views, land, seas, sun, moon, stars. Before all of that came to Hashem's, so to speak, mind, He had that idea in His divine mind that the creation should come back to Him, first of all. And we are that generation that can come back. And the Zohar HaKadosh is saying, what is the meaning of the word Shuva? The Zohar is asking, what it means to come back? To come back, the Zohar is answering, it's to come back to the place that you've been took from. We now are those ones that should walk back, should make that distance back from the darkest place, from the lowest place, from that valley of death and shadows of death, from that terrifying place that we're holding in, from that darkness, from that horrific situation that people are cutting their veins, that people are hanging themselves, that people are starving themselves, that people are tearing their faces with their fingernails, that people hate themselves, that people want to die, that people are suffering, that people are taking medications on daily basis, that people cannot take their eyes out of their phones and computers because they cannot think their own thoughts. 
that people are terrified from feelings, from relationships, that people are afraid to go to buy in the grocery stores and in the supermarkets, that people are lost, cannot find their way. From that darkness, we need to come back. Where to? To the place that we came out from. We are not new souls in this world. We are the same souls that found their way to the darkness and we are the same souls that are coming back to the light. And the Creator is the one that is waking us up. We are not waking ourselves up. I was not waking myself up when I was a soldier, when I was driving my Jeep and my bike, when I was smoking weed, when I was dancing and drinking. I was not waking myself up. I was going down to the depths of the creation, from one failure to the next, from one sin, from one crime to the next. I didn't have Yirat Shamaim. I was not afraid from the Creator. I didn't have faith in Him. I was doing whatever I wanted. I had my lusts and I had my fears and I was all over the place trying to find whatever I can. But the Creator stopped me. And he told me, listen, I'm here. You have someone to talk to. Call me and I'll answer. And I tried and I did and he did. And he answered on one thing and then on the second and on the third and the fourth. And suddenly it was a carved way. It was an open route. Okay? Whenever you call me with truth, I'm going to answer your prayers. And it's been clarified to me that his existence, existence is not doubtable. And today, thousands of students are enjoying my life experience wisdom and taking that lesson and bringing it into their own hearts. And I'm not waking them up. It's Hashem waking them up. Because they were searching for different things on Google when they found me. I promise you that. <laughs> They were Googling different names, different topics, different ideas. And suddenly they saw a wonderful slogan, a wonderful class, a nice face, a nice idea, and they clicked on it. Or on Facebook, or on WhatsApp, or on Twitter, or whatever. And suddenly it came into their life, and changed their life, and uplift their life. And it was a shame that was using the same method that he was using with me to the souls of the next generation to wake people up from within that you will find your way back that you will know that no one taught you how to come back to Hashem only Hashem was waking you up because He touched your heart with no connection to me when someone asked me, who was that person that made you do tshuva, that woke you up? I start laughing. First time I heard that question, I was laughing. Someone was machzir oti b'tshuva? Someone, someone, one person, a man, a rabbi, a teacher? No way. It's a joke. If not that Hashem Himself woke me up and touched my heart and woke up that spark, that flame from heaven inside of my body, No one in the world was able to touch me. No one in the world was able to convince me to change my ways. If you would tell me when I was 18 years old that you sh I should keep Shabbat, I would laugh. I should eat kosher, I would laugh. It was hilarious. It would be a joke. It wasn't an option. But suddenly a sham opened my eyes from within, from inside. And suddenly I saw the beauty of Torah. Suddenly I saw the grace of mitzvot. I saw how that light is different than other shades of, of colors and light in the world. Suddenly I recognize a different flavor, a different sense to it when it's coming from a divine source, but only when you find it from within. And only when you're humble 
And only when you realize to yourself in front of your eyes, when you're confronting yourself and you're accepting your reality, your real true condition, only in that moment that you're 100% humble and you know that you cannot be a billionaire and that you're not able to become righteous and that you cannot buy houses and that you cannot have children and that you cannot find your soulmate and then you cannot be I don't know what only when you realize that whatever you receive you receive by the loving kindness of the Creator then that gift will stay for you forever only when you hold yourself as the desert, that you're dry as the desert, and that you're bold and naked as the desert, and that you're hot and no life can exist inside of you as the desert, only in that humble place you can receive the Torah from the desert as a free gift. And we are that generation that received that gift from heaven to have that merit from heaven that the Creator will make sure to create an environment that will fail us on daily basis in thousands on thousands of failures that we won't have the slightest doubt that we might be worth it. That we might dream that we are special. We're nothing. And the godly soul that we received from heaven is the soul of God, is the beams of light of the Creator Himself that are shining from within our thick and dark and sealed bodies. And He is our lifeline. And He is waking up all of us from inside. And not our wisdom is opening the way for us. And not our purity. And not our holiness. And not our knowledge. Before, and I can swear to you on that, before of every class that I'm coming to teach, the Creator makes my mind blank. I don't remember anything before I'm coming to teach. I'm not able to prepare my classes. I'm not able to plan my lectures. I don't have that ability. Because if I would have my wisdom with me, if I would have my knowledge with me, I wouldn't be humble as I am before of every class when I'm coming to teach. Before of every class, the Creator is taking me from no matter where I hold, and He's bringing me to rock bottom. Even one second before the class, it happens once in a while. But it happens before of every class. Before of every time that I need to open my mouth, the Creator is reminding me, you are a complete zero. Zero. And only when I am standing and realizing that this is the truth, not that I need to act zero, that I need to play humble, just when I come to that understanding that I am not worthy to stand here, that I don't have the knowledge and the merit to speak, then the Creator is finding me qualified and putting His words in my mouth to go out and heal your spirits and revive your souls and give water to your tired spirits. Only because that, that is His will. And when He is humbling us, when He is humbling me, by that His message can be transferred in a perfect way in full power. Only when you know that you are zero, the light of Hashem can go through you in perfect volume, in the maximum volume. And this is why our generation, the last generation, the generation of Mashiach, is qualified to receive the face of Mashiach. Because when we're looking at the mirror 
We cannot even recognize ourselves, our true selves. You're looking at the mirror and you don't know who you are. You don't have a clue who you are. You look at yourself and you think to yourself, who in the world is that person? What is he doing in this world? What am I doing here? What is my mission? What is my name? What should I do? What am I supposed to do? And you keep on pushing forward with that understanding and you're not backing off and you're not giving up and by that the light of your souls will shine completely and will illuminate the world with the light of faith, with the light of Hashem. And you should know that everything you went through in your lives came to your life with a purpose and for a reason. And that reason is to bring you to that place of understanding that you need the Creator by your side. That Father in Heaven is your only solution and that you don't have another solution except of connecting yourself to Him. Now even while trying to connect ourselves to Him in the ways of religion, in the ways of Torah, listening and following rabbis and teachers, even in that way you can lose your humility and you can lose that goal that you desired, that purpose that you had. Because when you think to yourself that you learned Torah, that you are capable, that now you are wise and talented and gifted, by that you lose your simplicity and your humility and you lost your ability and your credit to be a vessel to hold the light of Hashem. The Torah got two powers. One is the power that is a potion of life. Sam Chaim, that can revive the dead. But from the other side, from the dark side, from the dark side of the letters of the Torah that is written in dark letters that made out of dark fire on the white fire of those blank pages of those humble papers that from one side can be thrown to the garbage and from the other side amazing songs and amazing poems of the righteous ones can be written on them. From the dark side the Torah can be a poison of death a lethal poison that can poison the souls that are drinking. The Midrash is saying that the <coughs> devil, that that horrible, horrible demon, Ashmedai was his name, he every night at midnight is going down to this world and with his filthy hands touching the water of Torah that are in the well. And in the morning, all those scholars are coming to learn Torah and they're thirsty for their learnings. And if they have the merit, so the Creator is passing the water that were still in the bottom of the well and have not been contaminated and impured by those filthy hands of that devil, and those righteous ones will be protected. But most of the Torah scholars, most of the people that are learning Torah are failing by that well, by those water. Why? Because they were not humble. Because they have not purified and humbled themselves. <coughs> They didn't realize that you need to be a vessel to receive the light of Hashem. They think that if they came for eight hours of learning or one hour of learning, so they became righteous already. You know that the person that is keeping all Shulchan Aruch, all the rules that have been set for us to keep, he's not being called righteous. He's a simple Jew. You're keeping all Shulchan Aruch doesn't make you righteous. Even if you keep all Shulchan Aruch, you're a preservant. You're an Orthodox Jew. All of us? 
Hilarious. It's a joke. Who are we? We don't know how to keep Shabbat. We don't know how to eat kosher. Do you know if it's kosher? You know to read K. You know to read O U. You know to read Badatz Adar Charedit Chalav Yisrael. Okay, you know how to read. Do you know if it's kosher? Can you tell me yes, it's kosher? You don't know. Mashiach will have the ability to smell and to know if that meat is kosher meat or not. You? You don't know. Your nose doesn't work. Your eyes are lying to you. Your ears are, are, are fed with lies. Your heart can't feel. Can you see someone poor and ignore him? Yes. Can you see your soulmate crying and ignore? Yes. Can you scream at someone without understanding what you're causing him? Yes, 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 yes. So the answer is no. <laughs> it means that you're failing in Kashrut, that you're failing in Shabbat, that you're failing in your prayers, that you're not an angel. If you can see someone in sorrow and in pain and not realizing it, you're blind. You're deaf. You cannot feel your sensors are not working properly. You're not righteous. Righteous is someone that is divine. It's someone that has a different spirit inside of him that he can feel, that he knows, that he can sense. That he's got divine spirit. That he understands one thing from the next. Not only keeping Shulchan Aruch. He is a righteous person. He is a holy soul. His light is shining from within. He's touching some sick person and he's healing him. He's able to deliver godliness to this world. And in what it depends... It depends in an inner connection with the Creator, a connection that will never be separated. It's an inner chain of faith that He will never gonna drop off, that He will never gonna give up on, that He will believe in Hashem even if Hashem will crush Him to pieces even if Hashem will make ashes from him, he will never going to stop loving Hashem. That's a righteous person. That King David is saying, When he will come to kill me, I will keep on loving and desiring him. With no end. That's holiness. That's a righteous person. That he will put in his mind that no matter what he's going to go through, he won't surrender. He won't back off. Now you know what I see? I see that in you. I see that in you. In each and every one of you, every single one of you holds that spark inside of yourselves. What's the reason you have not given up yet? What's the reason you haven't killed yourself yet? What's the reason you haven't committed suicide? What's the reason that you haven't jumped from the highest tower? What's the reason that you haven't removed your cover, hair cover? What's the reason you're still keeping Shabbat? What's the reason you're still keeping Kashrut? What? in the world is your reason except of an inner light that lives inside of you that screams with all his power I'm not giving up I'm not giving up because I believe because I believe that there is truth because I believe that the Creator he loves me an unconditional love that's why, even if I'm going to fail, I'm going to continue. Even if I'm going to break, I'm going to continue. Even if they're going to slice me to slices, I'm going to continue. And I'm going to continue and continue and continue and never going to stop. And you're like that. And you're not the only one. You're surrounded by believers by holy souls that the spark of Hashem is shining from their souls from within and breaking all the walls of separation and canceling all the dividings, breaking all the walls of darkness and illuminating and connecting us with threads of an unconditional love. 
with passion to the Creator. And the gift is that we failed thousands on thousands of times. The things that you hate the most, those humiliations, those are the biggest gifts that you received from the Creator ever. They built your character. They built a place for your spirit to hover inside. Those humiliation, that humility that you purchased with tears and sorrow and pain and screamings to your own pillow in the middle of the night. Those were the moments that you bought your faith your eternal life, you achieved them in those hours that you were so close to despair and you decided not to give up. That was the moment of your eternal success. In that moment you shone to the world and to heaven above that the Creator <coughs> is super strong and that His powers are endless. And that he can bring the creation from lower than 51 gates of impurity back to where it came from. To the days of Kedem. To the earliest days, ancient days, when the sun was rising. When the creation was illuminated from his light. That there were no blockings to his light. That infinity was all around. To those levels we can climb and we don't need to be able to function by the rules and by the orders and by the commandments. We just must need to commit ourselves from within never to lose Hashem. Never to lose our faith. That's your salvation, that's your redemption, that's your answer. Money is not the answer. Marriage is not the answer. Children are not the answer. A house is not the answer. Making Aliyah, living in the Holy Land of Israel, is not the answer. Harabite is not the answer. Mikveh, not the answer. Tzitzit, not the answer. Shabbat, kashrut, not the answer. What is the answer? Tshuva! Tshuva is the answer. Tshuva is the answer. The meaning of the word tshuva is the answer. The answer is not Shabbat, and not Tzitzit, and not Filin, Rashi, Rabbeinu Tam, and Kashrut, and Nehadrin, and Tchumim, and Eruvin, and Mishkolot, and Matzot, and all of those wonderful gifts that we received are our weapons. Those are our tools. Those are gifts that we received. Those are wonderful, precious diamonds that we received. Those are your treasures. Put them deep in your pockets. They're not the answer. The answer is tshuva. It's to come back to Hashem. To come back to your faith in yourself. That the Creator, He loves you in unconditional love with no connection to your color, to your accent, to your height, to your knowledge, to the hours that you spend in learning, to the hours that you spend in prayer, to how many times you went to the mikveh, to how many times you've been into the Lubavitcher Rebbe's Tzion, or to Rabbi Nachman of Breslev's in Uman. Those are treasures. Put them in your pocket, deposit them in your eternal bank account for heaven to enjoy them. Bless you! It's not the answer to your fears, to your anxieties, to your depression, to your confusions, to the fact that you are lost in life in darkness. Your lifeline is your soul, is your lifeline. Simple. Learn from simple words. Life depends in the soul, right? Your soul is your life. It's your lifeline. Where is your soul? 
within, inside. You need to find your soul. You need to come back, like the Zara Kadosh said, to the place that you came out from, to who you really are. You are a godly soul. Your soul is part of God from above. Chelek eloka mima'al. You cannot change it. The color of your hair, the color of your skin, the color of your eyes, the size of your wallet will not change the root and source of your soul. Those are only external coverings that are blocking the light of your soul. That are making people think that you are someone else. Oh, he is wealthy. Oh, he is poor. Oh, he's a doctor. Oh, she's a lawyer. Oh, he's a scholar. Oh, he's a righteous man. We are pieces of junk. That's what we are. We are flesh and bones made out of ground, of earth, mud, water, and earth mixed together. Okay, clay, garbage. And Hashem put a soul inside of that Pinocchio. And now you can walk. Hi. And you can wave, and you can smile, and you can make faces, and you can think that you're a billionaire, oh, that you're so poor, that you're a house designer, that you're a rabbi, that you're an inspiring speaker, whatever you want to imagine. The truth is that you are a piece of junk, and you have a godly soul inside of you. That's, the, that's it. Now you need to come back to the place that you came from. You came down from heaven. That's who you are. You're a godly soul, and to that you need to come back to. And the color of your armor, the color of your outfit, what that is covering you, is just something that you need to be aware of and to use it for the purpose of your life. You need to be bright and wise and wealthy because the Creator wants you to use your soul through those coverings. You need to be tall and blonde and skinny because the Creator wants you to use those coverings to reveal the light of your soul. You are not your body. You are not your vehicle. You are not the money that you have in your wallet. You are the soul that you are. You are the godly light that is treasured inside of your body, trapped inside of physicality. Now you need to unleash it. You need to let it go. You need to let it shine. You need to express godliness all around you, to all of your surroundings, to your beloved ones, to those ones that are able to listen to you because of the color of your eyes, because of the amount of money that you have in your wallet, because of your position in that office, in that job, because of your years of experience on being a doctor, eye doctor. Perfect! You have certain souls that are attached to you. You should spread the light of emunah, of faith, to them, to teach them that they are also godly souls, that they are also children of the Almighty. That's your mission. Use your body, use your talents, use your power, your ability. With everything you've got, spread the light of faith, of truth, of reality, of Hashem, in the world. Use the tools that have been given to you to spread emunah in the world. Emunah in Hashem. Emunah with H in the end. Emunah in Hashem. Emunah in yourself. Not foreign idols. Not believing in foreign faiths. Believe in yourself that the Creator, He found you worthy, that He loves you, that He found you so sweet, so adorable, so 
precious to reveal himself to you, to supervise on your life in a way that you will find, that you will recognize him in your life, that you will feel that he's touching and playing with your life, that you will sense his existence that you will see and recognize Him in your life. He found you worthy. And when you check yourself, you see that you're a piece of garbage. So how can it be? Because all those failures and all those downs came to you by the Creator in a unique and fantastic supervision to bring you to humility to that recognition that you are a zero, and then you became a vessel to hold the light of Hashem. And now He can shine His light upon you, and to wake you up, and to use you to wake up all of your beloved ones for your own good. And those circles will go and spread in the world by simple people like us. Simple people like us. And you don't need to be no one else because you cannot be no one else. He made you only you. And that's where the story ends. You are who you are. That's it. That's why we must work hard not ever to pretend to be someone else. Not ever to lie to make someone else like us, accept us, respect us. That he won't think bad things about us. We not supposed to be scared of people. People are pieces of garbage. <laughs> Appreciate their souls. Love their souls. Care about their life purpose. Care about their souls, their precious souls. If you see that you can help him spiritually, give him, love him, heal him, support him. Whatever you can, you should do. If you see that he's trying to take advantage of you, to use you, to build himself on top of you, to destroy you, run away from him. Stop him. Avoid from him. Stop him from hurting others. You must. If you're not going to do that, no one will do that for you. We must fight with all of our power to save ourselves and to save the weak ones that are surrounding us to fight for our sisters and brothers, and to protect our tribe, to protect the nations, to protect the world, to be a pillar of light to the nations that everyone will know Hashem and will have the ability to call Him in His name. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, the Muna Project is a non-profit organization. You're more than welcome to support us and to help us to expand our wonderful activities around the world. We're touching the hearts of thousands and thousands of souls on daily, hourly basis. Save lives, please, by helping and supporting our project. If it's right now, if it's through our social media outlets, you can find us. You found us everywhere. Please help us share this content it's on facebook in a couple of days it will be also on soundcloud and links on twitter youtube for sure our website emuna.com help us to spread the light of hashem and hashem will answer all your prayers and requests holy hopes and holy desires as soon as possible amen, amen. amen. we hope you enjoy this video very much Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.